Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Street Tips here. And I've got the camera adjusted so that you can see the uh, amps as I do this silver cell maintenance. I'm going to pull out the anode bar, get it up out of the way. We're going to add some more of our impure silver in here. I'm going to reach in stir this up I give it a stir every time I uh, do any kind of uh, whenever I get around it basically come out and stir it up now we're going to reinstall the anode bar and look at the amps how they jump back up now they're up over one amp and I just wanted to show that's what happens when I do this maintenance this has been running for about six days and this is the second use of the same electrolyte and you can see the uh, silver that's forming in there on the cathode it's slow going this time I believe because there's a bunch of copper in that electrolyte now as long as I don't go over 60 grams per liter that should be okay the copper will not plate out with the silver but that copper in there will promote crystal growth so I should get some nice fat crystals out of this run notice there's a little scum floating on top of the uh, of the uh, electrolyte that happens during the second run usually dust from the air gets in there and settles in the electrolyte and here's what we're looking like inside of our uh, anode basket that's our impure silver that we're feeding in it's getting clogged up with slimes and that's why the uh, crystal growth has slowed way down I was preparing to set up my second silver cell and I brought the power supply that I had in storage out plugged it in to see if it was going to work properly and evidently there's a problem for it with it whatever I uh, give it a little juice to get it off the constant current mode get it to go to constant voltage mode it jumps all the way up and maxes out and uh, I can't adjust there's no adjustment on the voltage so I think the uh, this power supply is done it's been in service about five years so I've ordered a new one as soon as that comes in we'll go ahead and set up the second silver cell so rather than work on silver I guess what we're gonna have to do is resort to refining some gold that I have saved up this is 14 K stuff ten K eighteen K now we'll take this out and we'll start uh, put some flame on this and get it melted I've calculated that I need two hundred five 206 grams of sterling silver to import that gold our yield should be 101.2 grams of pure gold Here's the silver that I've got measured out. It weighs 200 6 grams it's sterling silver spoons You can see the word sterling written right on the back of these things That's how I tell if I've got actual sterling silver or not and this is a bag of sterling silver that I've accumulated from sterling silver flatware sets. This is where the silver comes from for my silver cell. I'm going to use this silver to encourt the gold and then I'll recover the silver out of that operation. Cement it out with copper, melt it into shot and run it through the silver cell. So this is where my, my silver comes from for my silver cell.
Here's our encoded gold. And what we're gonna do is add some nitric acid to this. I've got about one liter of used dilute nitric acid. I'm gonna put this right on in here. Gonna add a little bit more water here, distilled water, be about a hundred milliliters. And now we'll cover this thing up. Give it a little stir here. And we're gonna set it up on this low heat. And we're gonna repeat our experiment. I'm gonna leave the heat down low this time. We're just gonna let this simmer in this dilute nitric acid. There should be enough in there to remove all of the silver and all of the base metals. Ready, go. I came out at four o'clock in the morning to check on the uh, reaction. You'll see that the solution is boiling and there's no fumes in there. So that tells me that the uh, nitric acid has ceased reacting with the silver in the cor in corded gold. I'm gonna add some sterling silver pieces to one of my silver jars. And then what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and pour this liquid off into the silver jar. That liquid right there, that blue liquid, is the secret sauce. It contains lots of silver. All the silver that we've added during the inquartation process, plus any silver and base metals that was already in the gold, is uh, being extracted by that dilute nitric acid that we boiled the inquarted gold in. But this is where the silver comes from for my electrolytic silver cell. I use sterling silver to refine gold and then I pour it off into my silver jar after I've extracted it with those nitric acid boils. You can see, see there's still a ton of uh, nitric acid left in that solution. It's reacting vigorously with the pieces of ster sterling silver that I added to that silver jar. Even though all the fumes had uh, cleared up in that beaker, there's still a ton of active nitric acid. And I keep a uh, bottle of distilled water handy to knock the reaction down, just in case it wants to try to come up and boil over the top of the rim of that uh, silver jar. Here I'm rinsing as much of the blue liquid off as I can. And this is what the gold looks like so far in the process. Most of the silver and base metals have been removed now. I'm adding some more distilled water and some more nitric acid. I'll keep doing this over and over. If the color of the solution is blue, that means we're still pulling copper. If we're still pulling copper, we're probably still pulling silver as well. Here it's obvious that we're still pulling copper and silver because the liquid is still blue. So what we'll do now is pour this solution off into the silver jar, rinse it, try to get as much of that blue liquid off as possible. And we're gonna set it back up on the heat after we've added a little bit more distilled water add another chug of distilled water and some more nitric acid and we're going to keep doing this until we get a colorless solution that copper in the sterling silver makes a wonderful color indicator here you can see it's still got some blue color to it we're going to pour this nitric off into a container and save it because it's still got some active nitric that we can use. I'm going to rinse the gold, pour the rinses into my uh, silver jar, add some more water, 
put it back up on the heat. We're going to add some more nitrate, cover it up, and let it boil again until we get all of the color out of the liquid. The gold has been boiling now for hours in hot dilute nitric acid. The color of the solution is cleared up. So now what we'll do is rinse the gold off, pour the rinse water off in my silver jar. I'll add some distilled water and give the gold a boil in a little bit of distilled water. And now what we have down here, in the bottom of this beaker, is pure gold. Almost three nines fine, just like it is without any further refining. Okay, let's take this over here now to the melt table. And what we'll do is melt this up an ingot. Here's the gold. You can tell by the surface, frosty like that. It's not very high purity. I mean, it's probably 995 to 99, uh, 992 to 995 purity. That's okay, we'll be sending this in to the big refiner. And so there's no need to go through the entire uh, refining process with this. Graphite mold is okay. It just got a little bit wet. It'll dry out and be just fine. Here's our pure gold ingot that we just poured. Probably 990 to 992 purity. We're expecting 101.2 grams of pure gold. Let's see what we got here. We got 100.4 grams of pure gold. We'll take it. It's not high purity because we didn't refine it with aqua regia. We just encorded with silver, pulled the silver back out with nitric acid boils. And as you can see, that does a pretty good job of getting pure gold. 
this is good enough to be sent into the refiner that's what I'm gonna do with this all right this will conclude the video thank you for watching